He says, you're scared that, that I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> and I said, you're kidding, right? You're kidding, I'm going circles around you. She said, then, then why don't you do it? I said, fine, I'll do it. My wife is trained. I go out and get me some brand new Asics, right? The nice ones, and I'm like, it's on. And I start, I start getting myself ready to train, right? We're in Vancouver, Canada, and there's this, this race called the Sun Run, the Vancouver Sun Run, it's a 10 kilometer. There's what, 60,000 people, Stephen? Something like that. And I start running, right? And there's a street that's a mile long, right? A block that's a mile long. And I start training, and I make sure she's not home when I'm training, because I don't want her to see this. And I'm running, and I get like three quarters done, and I'm like, I totally ran three quarters of a mile without stopping. And I'm excited, and I'm pumped up. And I keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, and finally I get to where I can get to the bottom of the block a whole mile without stopping. I get to church, and there's a group of brothers in the church that are, that are preparing to, they say, Jeffrey, how's the practice going? I said, dude, I just ran a mile this week without stopping. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, Jeffrey, it's, it's six miles long. Anyway, long story short, the day of the race comes. We get to downtown Vancouver, 60,000 people. We're lining up. This is the first time I've ever done something like this. And we're there, and I got it made, you know, I got the, the butterflies going, I'm a little, oh. And all I know, I know one thing in my mind, that there is no way on God's earth that my wife is going to beat me in this race. <laughs> and I'm standing there, and we're standing there, and I'm looking at her, I'm like, and she's like, are you ready? I'm like, I was born for this, right? And boom, the balloons fly, and people are going, and as we go, light speed, I'm like, I see you at the finish line. We just, and we're going. And let me tell you something, I was running and running, and I'm, I'm trying to let you know that I've never done this before. And I'm, and I'm running, I'm trying to focus, focus, and I'm humming, like these sound, these warrior soundtracks. I'm humming Braveheart, right? I'm humming them, and I just see the guys running on the field with their swords, and I'm just like, yeah. And I'm running, and I hit like mile one, and I'm like, and I'm like, pace yourself, pace yourself, pace yourself, and I hit, I hit mile two. Mile three, my knees are like shaking, and I'm like, I can't believe this. And I'm fear, and I'm, I'm just in such fear, that I, I'm thinking, I can't believe this. There's a chance that I'm not gonna make this. I get to mile number four, and every cell in my body is screaming, stop, stop. <laughs> Just walk just for five minutes. And I'm just like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I'm running. And I get to like the last two miles, right? Right there. And I see my wife in the bright purple shirt, way up there. <laughs> and when I saw that, my heart just dropped to my ankles. And I thought, I cannot believe this. I'm going to lose the race. Let me tell you something. I don't know what happened, but I dug deep inside <laughs> and I just brought out the absolute gutsy stuff that men are made of. <laughs> and I said, I, and I'm not, I, I promise you I said this, and I might even say it out loud. I said, I will die <laughs> before I lose this. And I just put my head down, and boom! And you, man, I'm telling you, this was movie stuff, and I was just like, I was like, bop, bop. <laughs> And right, we're on the final bridge, half a mile or so, and I see her, she's like, from the piano or so. And I'm thinking, if she sees me, she's gonna put a little gut into it. So I just like, and I'm on the side, and I'm running, and I'm just like, and I just book it, man. I don't even look back. I'm just gone. And I see the finish line. I'm like, and I'm drooling. And, I'm like, ah! and I get to the finish line and I cross. And I'm just doo -doo, doo -doo. and I go. And I turn around, try to get got some composure, and I'm just waiting there for her. And everything, and then she crosses, and when she crosses, I see her eyes just darting everywhere. Where's he at? Where's he at? And I'm just like. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't know if there's another feeling that matches that feeling. Listen to what I'm saying. 
I don't recall any other sense of utter satisfaction <laughs> than standing at the finish line thinking, I totally made it. You with me? And as, as, as the day goes by, and I'm thinking, what got into me? And I'm thinking, man, I wanted that thing so bad. Like, I just wanted it so bad that I said, nothing will stop me from getting it. You with me? And the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to me, and he said, Jeffrey, how bad do you want this thing? been saying, I want to excel, and I've been talking to people, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want, I want to be an overachiever, I want to have victory, and this and that, and, 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 and at the end of the day, the question was, Jeffrey, how bad do you want? Because if you want it bad enough, you'll get it. Guys, just think about when we get there. Think about when Jesus comes. And think about when that, when that cherry lays down with all the wings, you know, that are singing hallelujah as we read them. And we go up and it lands up there. And we step out of the chariot, right? And we're, and we're walking up and there's this massive wall. And there's this amazing, majestic gate that just swings on gold hinges. And we walk up, and I've always tried to imagine this for so long, where I just walk up to the gate of the, holy, of the city and I just like, and I just back up and I just look inside. And I just stand there as everybody, all the saints are rushing in. And I'm just standing there, just trying to take it all in. And I'm just thinking, I don't want to cross through yet. I, I, I want this moment to, to, to go on for forever. And I'm just sitting, and I'm looking inside in the, in the grass, silver mixed with gold, and the amazing tree, and the river, and the, and the glorious throne of God, and the angels are like going nuts on the violin. <laughs> And I'm jealous, and it's just like amazing. And I see King Jesus from a distance with his crown, and he's far above all else. And then I see, I see Adam over there, and I see them catch each other's eyes. And there's this amazing moment where the first Adam meets the second Adam, and so forth. And I'm just thinking and thinking, you know what I'm thinking about, young people? It was worth all the guts and glory to get here. Amen. Amen. When that day comes. We will not be complaining about anything because it's going to be worth it. And listen, I used to always think, man, when I get to the kingdom, I talk to my buddies and stuff about this. I, I think I'll talk to Moses first, maybe Paul, or I want to talk to Daniel, right? You just imagine yourself in heaven and you're this little nobody, right? And you're there and you just imagine yourself, you kind of take a number, right? And you're just in line. <laughs> and there's like, a trillion people, right? And you're like, well, you know, we're here for eternity, so it's all good. <laughs> and you're just waiting, you know, and every thousand years, you kind of take another step. <laughs> and Moses there, just kind of like, signing Exodus, you know. <laughs> and I'm just there, and I'm waiting and waiting, because I want to talk to these people. And I see, and I see Martin Luther, and I see John Wesley, mercy, John Wesley. And then I see Sister White over there, and I see the pioneers, and I see all these mighty preachers that just fill me with inspiration. I think, wow! You know where this is going. I don't think that's what it's going to be like. I don't think that's what it's going to be like. Forgive this amazing arrogance that's about to proceed from you. I believe that when I get in there, there's going to be a lion waiting to speak to me. This is what I'm saying. Nothing to do with any amazingness of us. But because we are those people who made it to the end, we were able to see the stuff that they wrote about and never saw. Amen. I see Moses, about 2,000 people down the line, and Martin Luther, three behind him, and they're just waiting. They want to talk to me. And they want to say, Jeffrey, what was it like? What was it like? When that rain came down and the Holy Spirit came. And there was this amazing revival such as has not been seen since primitive godliness. What was it like, Jeffrey? What was it like when the greatest persecution 
that has ever touched humanity took place. You lived through it. What was it like? When Jesus came back and those dead people burst from their grave, what was it like? Can you imagine that? They're going to be lining up the front door. And when that comes, it will be worth all the guts and glory. Can you say amen? All of the battles, and maybe you are far holier than I am, but all of my personal battles with sin and with temptation and with priority and with selfishness, all of that blood from those battles will be well worth it. And I'll know one thing. I will not get to that moment without having something to tell those people. You with me? I will have something to tell them because I want to go all the way through, all the way through to the end. And it's one step at a time, and it takes Olympic guts and glory to pull that off. Are you with me? And that's what I want to commit to this morning. I sense that in my personal life, and I am not making this up. You talk to my wife. I just am hungry for a powerful revival in my own life. I'm just hungry for it. I want to write things that reach thousands of people and, and draw them to Christ. I want to, I want to be involved in, in ways and in movements that will influence this generation. I want to do so much. I want it so bad, and I want that from God. What about you? Amen. We will never go farther than we ourselves set, our, set for ourselves. This morning, I think we ought to make a special commitment. This morning, I think we ought to tell the Lord to give us a little more heart into our Christian journey and to help us go through with new energy and with new, new rigor. I'm gonna make an appeal for young people in this auditorium. We've been at the Loma Linda campus for some time throughout this week, and we've been, we've been there preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God. And, and the restoration program is not supposed to come to an end today. It's going to continue in a different format. There's gonna be groups of young people getting together who want to continue to learn, continue to study deeper, continue to have a deeper experience with God. We cannot allow this Sabbath to go to pass without us pressing together and without us signing up for where we could fit in and where we could get involved and where we could participate. I want to make an appeal this morning for the young person here. Maybe you're a young person here, that you've been around on Linda for a while, I don't know, maybe you're a visitor from elsewhere, but you love the Lord, you do, you love the Lord, and you are sincere, and you have desires, and maybe you are in that particular time in your Christian experience where you feel that you need to take your Christian experience to the next level of commitment. I wonder if there's a person here who hasn't publicly gotten married to Jesus, or maybe you were married to Jesus, but your marriage is in the rocks, and you need to be reconciled with Jesus. I'm wondering if there's one young person here that would like to be interested in studying in preparation for baptism. Is that you, young man? I'm wondering if you come forward. Is there another young man? Is there another young lady here? You'll come forward, brother. Somebody here who says, I want to begin my preparation for baptism because I want to make a public declaration that I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Is there another young person here that would like to join this, this, this bold young man up front here? Is there another young person here that senses that it's time for you to take your spiritual journey to the next level? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Is there another young person here? I remember when I was in the tank, my mother was not a Christian said, I won't be able to make it to your baptism. That morning, she said, I have to go to work. And I remember when I walked into the tank and, and, and I thought, my mom's not here. My mom's here. And I looked out to the audience. My mom was right there. And I thought, praise the Lord. Is there another young person here? One more. Can you